What is going on people? This is the kitchen cabinet video. Trying to get round to editing all of this footage that I've got. But we are on our travels now. We're two weeks in. We're currently in an unreal venue for a couple of our mates weddings. And we're here for a week. We've got electric hook up water so we are sorted. And I'm gonna get straight into this. So check it out and see what you think i hope it helps you out with your kitchen build that's it so folks i started off with the general carcass build by just assembling the outside of the carcass just bear in mind any wires or gas pipes that you're going to have in the van that you're going to need to get the carcass passed when you take it out of the van and just putting the outside of the shower room wall on here as well and that'll come into the video a bit further through. So once the basis of the carcass was built, just marking up the centre of the wall here, this is where the oven's going to sit and so I've marked the centres and the two struts here are the outsides of the actual where the oven will sit so you want to order up all your parts, make sure that you've got your centres correct and you've got the desired width for if it's in the case of your oven you need to be away from combustible material so you need to work this out as and when you get your pieces. This box here that I've got is the drawer that's going to sit underneath the oven so I just built that individually and then I've just fitted that after everything else is in there. So this is the carcass outside of the van once I've actually getting it started and then it was just a case of putting all of the little struts and everything in for the drawers to sit in and everything like that and a nail gun does come in handy for putting all of these bits of ply etc together all right guys just finished making the carcass for the kitchen so i'm gonna run through this with you now i didn't get it all on video and it's pretty pointless me doing all the exact measurements for my kitchen as the stuff that you buy you pr pretty much are gonna have to fit into the kitchen as an as you see fit or as it sits I don't know how you're going to use your wall space I don't know what sort of appliances you are going to buy so I'll run you through how I basically went about doing mine and then you can sort of tailor, tailor it towards your, your own kitchen so to start with the main framework is this 34 millimeter by 34 millimeter dressed plain dressed timber this is where the oven is going to sit as you can see the measurements on there I've just ordered some 0.5 millimeter stainless polished steel and that is going to line where the oven is going to sit because you can't have your oven next to combustible material on that note I would advise you to get all your appliances ordered and read through the instructions before you start planning your kitchen carcass as this will need to be pretty much the millimetre so I've ordered the oven you needed 20 millimetres play on either side and obviously depending on where you want the top of your hob to sit you'll need to sit at flush so basically there's just going to be the rings sticking over the top of the workbench with the sink it's a bell flash sink so this is made to measure in this part here and the sink is sat below the kitchen worktop because the worktop will just run over the lip of the kitchen sink so the kitchen sink sits in there i've marked a hole for the waste in there so the kitchen sink will sit flush with the front of here and then the kitchen workbench will be routed around this rim and there will be a strip coming along the back here which the taps will come out of which i'll show you in another video how i'm going to construct them 
there'll be some free workbench in the corner there to put whatever we want on. The workbench is real 28 millimeter, real hardwood worktop I think it is. So basically that'll come round the back of the cooker and will be routed around there also. So I'll show you how to do that with the router jig. And then here we have got where cutlery drawer is gonna be. And the fridge with the flush mount will be screwed into these frames here. As you can see, there isn't a button actually in the back of the framework there because the fridge is actually going to sit right back against the wall that cost basically the work workbench that i've ordered or was ordered was 600 millimeters which just comes out a little bit too far so i'm going to chop 100 mil or so off the actual workbench and basically the fridge is the deepest appliance that is in the kitchen carcass so i've cut it to the smallest depth that I can to save space in the van and that is why there isn't a button along the back there so like I say you have to tail your own kitchen carcass to suit but on the front of these drawers they're going to be 18 millimeter ply as you can see underneath the oven here there's a, a recess all the way around 18 millimeter recess so the pan drawer there's going to be underneath sits flush with the bottom of the oven here. There'll be 18 millimeter ply used on the kitchen cupboard underneath the sink there and 18 millimeter ply on the cutlery drawer here. So I've ordered some hinges up when they come and I know where the screws are gonna fit. I will put some noggins in between here or maybe just a straight bar across and then the drawer fronts will be draw fronts and I need to construct the boxes for the drawers as well. In here is just a little ply infill and I'll show you how I've sat this plywood in. This is just 9mm plywood. I've used that for where the sink's going to sit as well so if I come show you around the back here you can see I've just used 21mm by 21mm dressed batten and I've just stapled that in with my nail gun so that's the same on these ones behind which is 21 millimeters so obviously put the sides in first then the the buttons straight through and then the back panel is sitting against them buttons and put one along the bottom there as well and that infill is basically just a button down the back of that 34 millimeter dressed and then a little bit in the bottom there just to keep that bottom rigid what else have we got also this bit on the front here you might have seen this is where the heating duct is going to sit so basically that's just fixed in with little 21 millimeter by 21 millimeter plain smooth button as well and then that's just a recessed bit of wood and that sits flush so the heating duct's going to go in here it'll run along the back here the cutlery drawer is only going to come to here so the heating duct will run out along the back of the cutlery drawer through this panel along the back of the cooker through this panel and then down to here where the boiler will sit so that's pretty much it for the oh one more thing this bit of wood that's on the side here was basically I've already cut the the side of this wall out for this stud wall so what I did was fitted the plywood to the wall then when the kitchen car carcass was sat in I scribed along where I wanted to cut the wall in half so I've got the other half there that's the top half which is going to be fit fitted now and then i cut between where basically the middle of the workbench is going to sit so when i fit the kitchen carcass in i can get the inside of the wall bottom of the wall sprayed the same as the kitchen carcasses because this is going to be getting sent off to be 
sprayed professionally so I needed this part in here to be the same colour as it's getting sprayed in RAL paint which is a really hard wearing paint so, so basically now it's constructed I'm going to fill in all these gaps with filler, wood filler all these end grains will be filled and sanded uh, I'm just making the drawers for the kitchen cabinets. Got the rip saw and just got that set at the depth of the drawer, less 10 mil. Just left, gonna leave a little lip on the top and literally join the drawer about two mil below the front. This is the front of the drawer, 18 mil ply. So this is 140, so I've cut these sides at 130 and then the 10 mil will sit down to your drawer will be in this portion you just leave this you draw a couple of mil off the bottom so it doesn't catch when you open it so once your drawer is constructed i've got yourself some of these push to open hinges basically push them push the drawer in and it pops out so this will stop the drawer from falling out or rattling about when we are on the road Basically what you want to do is measure, measure the depth of your drawer, order some of these hinges up and then I'll give you a close up. If you can see that's where the 18mm ply is being sat and I've just described line up the back there so as long as your hinges are inside of this line and attached to your drawer in the corresponding position then you'll have no problems there so I'm gonna get these drawers made up and these hinges fit it fixed in this drawer and also the pan drawer and then see how it's working so as I've already explained I cut the drawers down the sides for the sizes first of all and then I've just rounded off the edges to make them a bit smoother I then use my brad gun with 50 millimeter brads to staple them together. With the 50 millimeter brads using the nine mil ply, some of them will tend to poke out of the side sometimes if they hit an end grain or a knot or something in the ply, but, or if the, you just don't get the gun straight enough, but you're gonna get good fixings in there. And then if you do come out the side, you can just snap them off and the filler will get that in the end. So once they're all put together, use the filler and then I've just give them a good sand, smooth them all off, ready to be sent away to get painted. And just one final bit of prep before they were sent off to the, the painter was some caulking up the seams on the insides of the drawers. This will just stop any dust or anything getting gathered in there when you uh, come to fit them. Once the carcass is all sanded down, I use the router to dress the fronts of the kitchen drawers and the cupboard door underneath the sink. And when you're using the router, you just want to come across the edge of the actual ply, come past it, and then come round to your other side and come back on yourself. And then the rest of the sides are just a plain router. You need to choose what bit that you want to use for this for how you actually want to dress your kitchen front so do a little bit of research and find what style is right for you so just a quick video on the craig jig folks for the kitchen cabinet this is the type of hole that it drills on the angle so you've got the clamp here with the jig itself which puts these sloped holes on the angle and you get your sharp drill bit here which obviously goes down these holes and this is what you're left with so basically 
you've got these two lugs here that just sit over the end of your timber then you adjust your clamp at the end here for how far away this is from this side and then on the bottom here you've got your millimetre here so mine that is 34mm by 34mm dressed timber so I've got it between the 32 and the 38 it doesn't have to be millimetre perfect but that'll give you the right setting for the depth of your wood and then you don't want to be drilling a hole right the way through but if you can see on the end of here it's just got a slightly less wide point than the actual barrel itself so you want this to come through but this this thicker bit not to go all the way through there's actually a little guide that you can put on with that allen key but if you're just careful when you are drilling then you can save yourself having to set the depth every time that you are drilling different different pieces of wood in in one day so do a quick video drilling some wood and that's about it for that Right guys, just installing the push to open hinges to the draw units for the kitchen. So just put this batten across to attach them to. Use the set square so they're all nice and plumb and square. And basically, if you can see the line here, that is the 18 mil ply. So I've sat the draw in place, so that's gonna be recessed into there. And where I'm gonna sit these hinges is basically just up to that line. So when you screw, when you open these up, like so, the, this bit here will be screwed into this button. And so I'm gonna screw this on first. And then when I come to attach this part from the other direction to the drawer, I'll know that this front here need to be sat flush with the front of the drawer unit and then once all of that is attached and the drawer uh, the cutlery drawer and the pan drawer is all attached then I can fix the drawer fronts which just dressed up with the router and so that's the pan drawer front and this is the cupboard door so yeah we'll get these fit now and I'll show you how they look once they are sliding. So when you've got your hinges fit on there guys, what you wanna do is measure from the bottom of the drawer to the middle of this bracket here, which is 53 millimeters in my instance. So you wanna take five mil off that cause you want the drawer sitting up around about five millimeters just so it doesn't get caught or anything. So 53 minus five millimeters is 48 millimeters. So you wanna measure that on your sides at both ends, put a little mark on and then put a line across. And then you'll know that that's your center line for where your screw needs to go into. So I'm gonna sit these on. I'm gonna make sure the end of this bracket here is sat flush with the front of this part of the drawer and then get them screwed in. So guys, that is the draw in place on the runners. So click to open, slides out, full extension, click to close. So that's the draw itself. Where's the draw front gone? I just started a minute ago. Oh, here it is here. So that's the dress draw, which is gonna get sprayed. That's sitting. That'll sit in the centre, nice and flush. And yeah, happy with that. 
It's gonna look professional job once it's all sprayed up. Just gonna get this pan drawing now. So that's both drawers working. Happy days, people! You, yeah, you! Yeah. Preach! Kitchen just come back sprayed from Spray Tech Joinery. Let's get this bad boy in. I right, just fit in the kitchen carcass here, as you can see, the gas feed's already in. There's some wires uh, to contend with and some piping it out the back here. So this is pretty much made to measure and it's gonna push in quite snug to the wall here and here. So basically when I made it, with that in mind, I just put some screws that I can get to in the corners here so I can actually split these joins that means i can get the wires from the back and also i can get to them pocket hole screws down there so i can get the gas feed through and then we'll just hopefully should just slide into place so took them screws out already going to take these pocket hole ones out now and then we will maneuver it around these wires and gas feed and then it's in place for the final time Bosom. At this point, I'd just like to give a thanks to Spray Tech Joinery who sprayed our kitchen up, did a fantastic job, really hard wear and paint. I will be putting a link in the description of this video if you have any similar work that needs doing to your van or kitchen or even your kitchen at home. Installing the well, not going to install the oven, but going to sit it in place. But before I need to do that, kind of be next to combustible material. So I've got this half a millimeter stainless steel. So that's obviously the sticker on the back to keep one side fresh while you install it. And then obviously that's what it'll look like, but it'll be a lot cleaner than that there. So going to measure in here, cut these to size, and then got some of this stuff here Envirograph which is good for application up to 1200 centigrade and down to minus 40 so this is going to be what I use to clog this onto the recess here and then I'm going to get the oven in place hook the gas up and attach it by the feet at the bottom and at the back so it's nice and sturdy. So that's the first one in place. This, These are 500 by 500 sheets so that was the right width so I just had to sit it in, scribe underneath and then cut it on the saw. So Gonna get these three panels done and then I'll give this nozzle end a cut and use the circle technique like you've seen in other videos to stick these on the side. So let's get the other three done and then we can see what the oven looks like in place. Just like to make a note here in hindsight, this bottom sheet where I'm putting it in the moment, you are gonna have to cut that pretty much to size. But the side panels, as you can see, I've cut them to size. I've just used a, a hammer to actually bend um, where the cut wasn't exactly perfect over the top. And in hindsight, what I would have done is just not cut them down to size and bent the actual metal over the top in the first place. And then the bench would actually cover that. So that's stainless steel in place. Just That's just giving it a bit of a wipe down. Advice would be if you can get these cut to size when they are sent out then do that But that was going to be quite a bit more expensive. So these four sheets in total cost 45 quid And obviously you just cut them yourself and if you wanted to get them cut to size you're probably just talking 100 quid So you're paying double what you can get them for there. So that's them in and let's see we're just fitting the kitchen door just this bit of 18mm ply using these hinges 
which are ninety degree snap hinges. So basically, just bring the door out ninety degrees and quite stiff. So you don't need a lock or anything like that. So fitting handles to the doors it doesn't matter whether you place the handle on the inside or the outside but you want to see where you want to actually sit the handle and then once you've got it in the position use your set square and set the depth then you want to create a cross on the bottom and top holes measure from the hundred mark on your tape measure to see what the width of the actual handle is Make sure that corresponds on the markings of your door and then use a, in this case, three mil drill bit that usually works for most handles. Make sure you don't use a drill bit that's too big or you're not going to cover that with the actual handle. And then drill through and drill through nice and slow so you're not getting splinters on the other side. Once you've done that, stick both of your screws through the back and then just tighten them up nice and slowly into the handle. Once I've done the same for the other drawers, it was time to connect the fridge up. This is just a simple 12 volt positive and negative connection and then the fridge just slid back into place and it was a case of putting the eight retaining screws in. Starting on the kitchen bench, I decided to cut the length of the bench first but if you're just having one complete length on one side of your van you cut the width off and um, then that's done and dusted but with mine being a bit of an L shape the widths were slightly different with how the sink and the tap sat so I cut the length off first for one side and then as you can see what I'm doing here just use the the guide on the saw to cut the width down So, just cut the first bit of bench, cut it for width first, then cut the back off. If you look, this is real wood oak worktop, butcher's block style. And if you get the <laughs> worktop, flip it, or when you unpackage it, it'll have which one's labelled the bottom of the top. Bottom of the top? It'll have which one's labelled the bottom. So, obviously, whatever isn't is your work surface and then it also has on the bottom front so you've got the front as some of the the back edges can sometimes be a little rough depending on how you want them you might be sanding them to round them off but anyway i'm going to cut the sink out so i've just cut it for width and length and just going to mark underneath scribe along here and along the back and I just want to leave a little 20 mil strip along the side here. So I'm just going to mark that on when the worktop is out on the work table. And then I'm going to sit the sink in, measure how much of an overlap or overhang I want. And then what I'm going to do is find a hole saw that pretty much matches the corners and pre-drill it with a small drill bit hole saw and then I'm going to use a jigsaw blade that is downward facing so the, the cutout is underneath and clamp my straight edge on and give two nice clean cuts and then one across and then that should give us a nice curved edge around the corners. Then we can give it a little sand and sit it in place and see how it looks with the sink. Push that straight edge up to where I want the bench to sit and then I can just run the straight edge across the side of the bench and that will give us the required width. So
So I've gotten the side overhangs and as you can see by the little arrow there that I've got on the line that shows where the cut is going to be made. So I've just replicated this depth which was around 20 to 25 millimeters on the back as all the lips of the sink were actually the same width and then just using a straight edge here to join up the marks. This outside line is the original mark from what I made on the underside of the board with a pencil and then the inside lines are the reduction of what I want the bench to overlap the sink. That was a mistake there. I measured 5mm big at this end so I've just corrected that. Put my pointers on so I know where to set me straight edge and then what I was saying about a hole saw basically want the corners to round off and then I'll run the jigsaw up to the edges so I've got a nice corner on the sink so just want to get your hole saw set pick one to suit sit it over your sink see if you're happy with that I'm happy with that. This is the one that I'm going to use. It is a 38 millimeter hole saw. So the easiest way to do this is just to scribe around the hole saw and then with something as small as this you can just eye the centers in and just pre-drill the hole just so your arbor has got somewhere to sit into and even with a, a bench this thin you're not going to get many hole saws all the way through so you just want to drill through until your arbor breaches the, the other side of the bench and then once you've done that just flip it over and finish the finish the cut off Whoop. once you've done that I know I did see jigsaw in all the previous little videos but jigsaw rib saw as long as you are careful enough Try and use your guide as much as possible. If you haven't got a if you haven't got a guide long enough or you can't get it on the side of your workbench, you definitely want to be using a straight edge for cuts like this, as it's just not something that you can freehand. Once you've cut all the way up to the edge of your hole with the rip saw, you want to finish it off with a jigs. Use a jigsaw for the cut at the back of the sink as it was just a bit difficult to get a rip saw in for this cut. So all that to sink in place, you can see the curved corners and how it overlaps halfway across the sink. So need to drill the waist here and then fit the overflow and then we can do the oven. So let's get the Oven cut so out. after I'd finished the sink cut, uh, I started on the worktop piece for the oven and just started with trimming a bit off for the depth of the workbench. After I'd done that, I marked out the oven. For this, I only needed a 5mm overhang and I didn't need as round a corner, so for the corner bits, I just used a 10 to 12mm drill bit and then use the same technique with the rip saw to rip up to the holes and use the jigsaw to finish off whatever was left to make that a loose cut. Just a quick tip if you are using a rip saw and you can actually use the guide that goes on the edge of the workbench that is a lot neater cut than using a straight edge or it makes the cut a lot easier so you can do that then use that if not make sure your straight edge is checked and double checked before you actually make a cut because with real wood worktops they are expensive and you don't want to be making any mistakes
So, before the kitchen benches go on, underneath on this back shelf here, there's going to be a 10 litre water container. Just sawed the shelf in half so I can pop this half out and get to the water container to clean it when this uh, when the workbench is over the top so to pop this out this is going to be the water container attached by some garvey band in there and then there is going to be a submersible pump that it comes from this cap here up through the bench and then there's going to be a little tap that is attached to the kitchen workbench there and this will be filled with fresh water drinking water so that's the little feed there for the 12 volt electric and i'll show you how i have done or how i'm going to get this filled so obviously the kitchen workbench is going to be over the top here and this is what i've done so basically got the, got a funnel just chop the top off there so this little lip here is going to give us somewhere to fix through to the underside of the workbench with a little screw. I'll then put some silicon around the outside of that. I have taken the blue part, the tap, out of the this side here. So, sawing the tap off because that's no good. Luckily, this funnel actually fit through this blue bit perfectly and there's actually a seal that fits in there quite well as as well so this part of the funnel screws onto this top bit and that is the bit that I've just chopped off which I won't be using either so basically that will sit that sits in there that's screwed to the underside of the bench and then there'll be silicon around the underside of the bench and then I'll drill a small hole which a grommet will sit inside of and then when I want to fill it up with fresh fresh water just pop the grommet out of the workbench stick a funnel through the workbench and then pour fresh water and then that'll fill this container up for us so I'm gonna get this fit with the kitchen worktop now and then we'll give it a test So that's a funnel drilled with a few screws into that and siliconed around the sides and I'm going to fit the workbench now and then it's just a case of screwing this and unscrewing it whenever you want the bottle in or out and that's it. We're in the upstands for the back of the kitchen benches so basically measured the complete length from the edge of the workbench into the corner and then you're basically going to want your mitre like that so the triangle will be going into the back of the corner and then the fronts will meet up so you want to measure the length across the back and then you will put a mark so this is your upstand you've got your curved top there so basically the cut wants to be going in that direction so the front of the upstand is the shortest side of the cut so basically 1720 was my measurement so i flip it to the back and you've got your 1720 mark there and then i just mark the direction of the cut and basically my mitre saw only goes 45 to one direction so you've got to work out whether which way you're going to flip the upstand here and then obviously just make sure you account for the, the width of your blade and then you just want to nice and slowly just plunge the saw through the upstand and then once that's set in place you can measure the one that's going to meet it and it's exactly the same process so I'm going to get these cut now and then silicon in place so I'll just try and get a video of this for you as you can see the 1720 that's that way so that's your piece you want to cut got the line for the 1720 the straight line there and then the direction of the cut which saw only goes in one direction on the 45 so basically when you plunge your saw 
You literally want the blade, the outside, the outside of the blade to be the, to this side. The outside of the blade to be this side of the line, so you're getting your full 1720 there. And then that'll be pretty much to the millimeter. So just fitting the upstands to the kitchen. We actually stood that out there, but that's joining quite well. But if, if that was flat against the wall, the, the bottoms don't actually join because the wall slopes down to the back. So basically, I'm gonna put a 50 mil brad and pin them through either side. So these are sitting nice and flush. And then I'm gonna pack the bottom of here out. Maybe I'll just put a blob of adhesive uh, along the bottom there. And then, uh, this, once I've done that side, I'll put a brad in these two as well and then I'll push all of the upstands into the kitchen all at the same time and then it'll make sure that all these seams and joints in the corner are mitered and looking quite neat. So let's get these fit. So that's the upstands mitered in. I haven't actually used adhesive to keep them in there. The tile's quite tight at that, so that'll stop that from popping out. And I've literally just put 150mm brad there, you can hardly see it, and one there at this side. So then we're keeping that back in. I haven't even put any fixings in there. So once the White silicon is around the top to seal in the, the gaps between the UPVC and the upstands then that'll give it a little bit of support as well but yeah that's them on so looking good. So I'm just going to go through the UPVC fit in case anybody does want to put this in their kitchen. We decided to do it after the shower room build as the stuff is just so easy to wipe down and it keeps the uh, kitchen looking nice and clean. No need to paint it again and again and for the extra cost I think it is actually worth doing so I started by sawing the UPVC sheet straight down the so middle just use a straight edge on actually how I did it anyway basically used a straight bit of timber to place that up from the top corner and straight on the bench and then I've measured the gap at the bottom and I've taken away about 15 millimeters, so I've got plenty of clay. Measured the one in the middle, taken away 15 millimeters, and then I have transferred them measurements to the board here. And then I'm going to nip, I've joined them up, I'm going to nip this off with the jigsaw, and then I'm going to sit this board in place, and then I should be able to use the scribe tool to scribe the rest of it and then that should be sitting in nice and snug so this is how close i've getting it and there's just this top bit needs nipping off here just had it in and out three or four times and just taking a little bit off where it needs be as i've shown you in other videos obviously the gap that you have at the bottom that's how much you will take off the top but obviously don't take that much off take off a little bit less and then just keep in and out and in and out and then you'll get somewhere near like this and then basically what you do is once this is sat in the van you just put the pen up against the wall and then scribe your line down until it tails off and then you've literally you've only got half a pen line there and then you literally just want to jigsaw this off and this will sit nice and perfectly flush into the corner and then we can mark the other side I can actually get in over I can get in behind 
the board this side of the van here so I can actually get my pen in and scribe the back and then I'll just be able to cut that out, clag it on and then we can get our upstandings and that sorted. So this UPVC panel that was on the two curved walls was pretty much the hardest cut. All the other ones were just square cut and they were pretty simple to do. Just take your time with this back wall as you, you need to get both of these curve cuts just about perfect and then once everything is cut you're just basically using the premium adhesive and just get that stuck onto the wall and then you just want to dress your corners up with your, your white silicon and job's a good one. So that is the tile stuck on and the splash back. So I've just got the smaller size of the upstand supporting it because basically I want this splash back quite snug to the upstand so that's just supporting it to make sure that's in the right place and this isn't going to fall and also I've got the upstand underneath the tile as well because the tiles actually just sliding on the silicon so so basically the plywood behind this UPVC bleh, so basically the plywood behind this UPVC cladding uh, had a bit of a kick in it so this tile wasn't sitting flush it was actually seesawing a little bit so what I did with this this UPVC cladding I put adhesive and I basically put a really thick bead of adhesive before I put this white cladding on there and then when I put it on I just haven't pressed this area of the cladding back as much as I have basically all of this has been rubbed down with the cloth but this bit here behind this top bit of the tile is probably stepped off the plywood a little bit so this tile is now sitting relatively flush to the UPVC cloud and I think I'm still going to have to put a small bead of white silicon around the edges of it just to tidy it up but uh, that's sitting quite flat and obviously when the up stands and that's set and everything's been dressed up I've got the socket on there that look quite nice so not really related to the kitchen but one upstand wasn't enough to do the whole kitchen so I had to buy two which left us with quite a bit of spare so I've just used what I had left to put a little skirting board around the floor which I think's neatened up quite nicely. Alright guys just on making these overhead cabinets. Focus. 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 Mm, focus. Mm, focus. Come on. Focus. Ah, oh, there we go. Hi right, guys, just on making these rear or head unit so if you're just building them in it is a lot easier but these are getting taken out to get sprayed along with the kitchen cabinet so basically start from the back button now them sliding door wardrobes that i put on in a previous video are going in behind here so i've just overlapped that so the bottom button is actually covered and it looks like one uniform piece of wood on the join there so basically just screwed the back buttons, you want to start from the back, get your bottom button in, get that fixed in nice and solid. So I've just pre-drilled with a 3mm drill bit and then with the Craig, what's it called, the Craig drill bit basically just countersunk this 34mm button halfway down. And then just start building out from there, you'll bring out your buttons. So basically you want the depth of your unit, take away the 
two thirty-four millimeters. That gives you your middle measurement, and then once you've built out from there, put your fronts on. Put your if you're just building them straight in, you just need a top button like I've done here. So basically, just put a top button in there, and then you brace your bottom button off your top button. But with this being taken out, I'm going to put, have to put a back button in here and a back button in along the top here as well. So there's not a great deal I can tell you. Basically, I've used Craig joints underneath because there's ply going on the bottom here to hide all them. The only one that's going to be visible is this one to give it a nice solid fixing into this ply wall here. So I'm going to get the rest of this constructed. I'll give you a quick look at it once it's done. And yeah, that's about it for the overhead units. Right, just a quick one on these head units. When you open the front and the sliding doors at the back, you've got these corner infills which are going to be shown. So, corner units constructed. I've got the sliding door here and I've just basically put it where I want here. I've put it so it's overhanging that button there. So, I just need a bit of ply cut to fit in there. And then I've just pushed it up against that wood there and put a little mark on the top and bottom and I'm just going to put a button from here to here halfway across this piece of timber here so if you look from the front it's come halfway across that bit of timber and once that button's on there it'll come halfway down that bit of timber and then all I need to do is is just put a bit of ply on the back of the both sides there and then give them a paint as well and that'll fill that in nicely. So I've just dressed the underside of the head units with a bit of 18mm ply. I've rounded the edges off with the router the same as I have with the drawers and the door fronts and then I've just mitered them in on the corners. So. Basically this just covers the underside of the cabinet because we are going to be putting some um, LED lights on there to shine down in the kitchen and these are going to be screwed to the underside of the cabinet so it would look a bit out of place just screwed on there with nothing covering them and it's just a nice nice little finish to the cabinet as well so basically it's exactly the same as the upstands for the kitchen you just want to sit your piece of architrave up against the overhead unit mark the length of it and then like I'm doing here just the direction of the cut and then follow the same protocol as the upstands so once you've got all of these pieces cut you want to use the Craig jig to get a good fixing onto your cabinet obviously make sure you use screws that aren't going to poke through up and into the cabinet and then you're going to have sharp nail or a screw sticking through to where you're going to be putting tins or, or whatever but use the Craig jig as you can see the drill has actually got the sleeve that you clamp on because with it being such a thin piece of wood you do need this quite accurate and it is it is worth putting that on for this occasion and you're going to get the same depth each time so once you've done that you want to line them up you can use a brad on the corners where the miters join still if you need to and then once it's all fitted together give it a sand down and your overhead cabinets are good to go
So that was the kitchen build. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll get back to you. But we are just having too good of a time. We've been through the UK for a week. We're down in the French Alps now. We've had a wicked time traveling down to here. I'm gonna keep this video quite informal. The French video will be coming soon. So follow our Instagram pages and social media pages as per. And I'll see you in the next video, which will hopefully be quite soon and take care of yourselves, much love, peace.